What's going on, everybody? I have been looking forward to this. Builds for Mass Effect, one of my favorite game franchises of all times. This is way overdue. Now, I am primarily focusing on insanity difficulty, but these same principles apply regardless of what difficulty you have the game set on, all right? Even more so, actually, on lower difficulties. Also, I'm not going to talk about each individual class, but certain things to keep in mind that regardless of what class you assign your Shepard, it should make the game seem like it's on a, on a much easier mode. But the rules do change a little bit from game to game, so I'd like to cover each one in turn. So the first thing to keep in mind with Insanity difficulty across all the Mass Effect games is that enemies are more aggressive. And that doesn't just mean they hit harder and can take more damage, but they have more powers at their disposal. They have basically the same stuff you have, and they're not scared to use it. They're going to use it more often, and they will. All right, so if you find yourself dying faster, it's not just because they're hitting you harder, but they're hitting you with more stuff. They have more ways to hurt you. And so with Mass Effect 1, and this really isn't, isn't so much the same with Mass Effect 2 and 3, the rules do change a little bit, like I said. Here, the key um, to Mass Effect 1 is essentially Liara to Sony and the abilities that she brings to the table. Notice we're sending this trooper literally into outer space, right? Insta-kill. That's with her lift. Now, I'm playing an adept, so I got to hit that guy with double lift. But Liara can do a lot of this on her own. In fact, a well-placed lift and a well-placed throw can shoot them like a rocket into outer space. And if nothing else, even if you can't insta-kill an enemy like that, you can take some of your harder enemies, like you have this, what, Krogan Battlemaster or Warlord or whatever right here, and you can leave them incapacitated on the floor long enough to do damage. The key is, as long as they are either floating around helpless or incapacitated on the floor or drifting off in outer space, whatever, they can't hurt you. Now, one difference between Mass Effect 1 and the other two Mass Effects is that a fully shielded enemy can be lifted and hacked. Notice that Geth Destroyer, which is pretty much an elite Geth Trooper, he still has shields, and we're sending him right off in outer space. In Mass Effect 2 and 3, you have to knock those shields and armor and barriers and stuff down before you can do stuff like this to an enemy. So Mass Effect 1 does allow you to exploit that a little bit. So a fully shielded, barriered, whatever enemy um, can be lifted off his feet and basically made helpless for a period of time. This is the key, regardless of what class you're playing, to getting through Mass Effect 1. And you might say to yourself, well, you don't start the game with Liara to Sony. All right, what happens before you get her? And especially considering some of the hardest fights are in the process of getting Liara. Well, um, some of the hardest things you'll face along the way to getting Liara are Geth. And remember, Tally has the hacking ability. So when you first start your characters, when you first start your game, on your character, if you're playing a biotic of, of sorts, concentrate and lift in singularity. As soon as you get Liara, sink your points into lift and singularity, right? And if you want to save some points, if you want to do more of the role-playing part of the game, like, you know, hack, hack stuff and get loot and things like that, split your electronics and your decryption between your characters. Like, if Tally brings decryption to the table, then I don't need to put any points into her electronics. Notice I have some now because we're level 50-something and I'm just throwing points into whatever. But the bottom line is that last little triangle symbol means that you can pick the hardest locks, right? Okay, so I give electronics to Liara, and then I give uh, decryption to Tally. So I can split that up so they both have more points to spend on other stuff like, you know, ass-kicking abilities and stuff, right? But her main thing that she brings to the table is hacking. And you face so many geth in the game that it really comes in handy more often than not. And then with Liara, it's lift. Singularity is for mobs. Lift is for single targets. Now, if you're playing an adept also, you become a really powerful one-two punch. Because you can basically keep entire mobs of enemies... Um, completely incapacitated while you pick them off in midair with your pistols. And if you're hitting them with warp also, then um, they're taking extra damage. Now that's another thing about Mass Effect 1 which they change in later Mass Effects is that if you use an ability and it's on cooldown, you're able to use other abilities. In Mass Effect 2 and 3, as soon as you use an ability, all of your abilities go on cooldown. The longer the cooldown of that ability means the longer you have to wait for the rest of your abilities to come up. And uh, one other thing to keep in mind is biotic amps and omni tools, depending on if you're playing a tech character or whatever. Uh, for Tally, it would be her omni tool. Notice the tech cooldown bonus, right? And with my biotic amps, it's the same thing, biotic cooldown. I'm looking for max cooldown. I want to use my abilities more often. It's not so much for dealing damage like abilities really come useful for in later Mass Effects, because they're like obsessed with powers in Mass Effect. It's really a game of powers, not so much guns. Guns are useful in everything, right? But it's really a game of powers and managing those correctly. And that becomes so much more important in Mass Effect 2 and 3 especially, right? But for right now, um, powers are more of a tactical thing, not so much a damage dealer. 
the idea is to um, control the battlefield, essentially. And like I say, Liara is the cor cornerstone of that. She's, she's what everything else revolves around. Her ability to toss enemies around and ragdoll them. They cannot shoot you while they're floating around helpless. Just keep that in mind. And that will save the day regardless of what class you're playing or whatever. All right. Now, as far as gear goes, I like the Colossus armor or I think the Titan. Um, silverback for for uh, for the Turians, you know, depending on your, your squad members and stuff. But, you know, you look for stats and, and you find different combinations with your weapons and stuff. But to me, we could get all off into optimal builds for a gun, like, you know, to use a scram rail and then a, uh, a, a frictionless materials and then which ammo type to use. You find something that works for you. You can, you can make guns that basically um, can never overheat. You can do different stuff like that. That's kind of secondary. All right. The primary focus and what I want to focus on, regardless of what class you play, was the simple principle that as long as you have Liara in there able to lift stuff, if her lift is maxed out, you could even take the final end boss and keep him floating around helplessly most of the battle. Just for example, and if you can hit him with lots of warp, you can knock him down a lot faster. It makes the insanity fight a lot easier. I'm not going to include the footage here. If you want to see it, you can go to my uh, Let's Play. It's the last video in my Mass Effect 1 playthrough, and you can see the fight with that guy, and it's with these same characters here. In fact, this is footage just from earlier in that same game. But I wanted to, to kind of throw this out there. And uh, If you want to see early game build and how I got along, um, although I was playing the Adept, so it made things, in my opinion, easier, light armor and pistols is your weakness, right? But the ability to have lift and singularity at your disposal, lift early, singularity, it takes a while to unlock that, right? But you do have some of those things earlier in the game. And stuff but once you get Liara you're basically unstoppable if you use her right and the, the thing is just to focus on her lift and her singularities and to incapacitate entire mobs of enemies all right now we're gonna get this Reaper the hell off of our station we'll move on to Mass Effect 2 now in Mass Effect 2 they cranked it up a notch changed the game up a little bit what they did was they introduced enemy resistances and that's not just shields, but now they have barriers, which is basically a biotic shield. And then they also have armor, and then they have health bars. And some enemies have combinations of the above. And so the key to Mass Effect 2 is going in with all of your bases covered. And that doesn't necessarily mean just on one character. But one thing they introduced, which is, which is awesome in Mass Effect 2, is the ability to assign a power to your squad mates. To where you can hit left and right on the D-pad and they will use those powers as long as they're on cooldown. Now, the downside is that once they've used a power, all powers are on cooldown. That's one thing they changed up in Mass Effect 2. It also applies to Mass Effect 3. But you can assign those powers, and if that power is on quick cooldown, your followers can essentially spam their powers right along with you. All right. Now, Miranda in Mass Effect 2 is basically um, like Liara was in Mass Effect 1. She's basically the cornerstone of the party. She not only provides a constant buff to the party, once her, uh, her class tree is, is maxed out. But she also provides overload, which is great against shields, and warp, which is great against everything else. So the key I've found to building a party, regardless of what class you're playing, is to assign powers and hotkey powers that complement whatever you're not doing. So in my case, this infiltrator, I have disruptor ammo. That's, that's a great shield buster. So is overload, which Miranda has. That's a great shield buster. And if I didn't want to run with disruptor ammo, I'd probably take overload as a bonus power. Or I'd take warp as a bonus power and let her spam overload to take care of shields. Either way, I'm going to hotkey the one thing for my followers that I'm not doing. In my case, if I can take care of shields, then I'm going to have Miranda spam warp as often as she can to take care of pesky barriers like this uh, the, like this collector harbinger right here, right? And also deal with armor and deal with health. Biotics are basically, at, the rule of thumb is basically biotics aren't real good against shields, but they're pretty much good against everything else. And overload and disruptor ammo are, are especially good against shields, and that's about it, right? So I have disruptor ammo on my weapons, and sure enough, I don't get the added bonus of, say, incendiary ammo or cryo or whatever. But I do get to be a shield buster here. Now, if I was playing an adept and I had primarily biotics, then guess what I would have Miranda doing? I would have her spamming overload on everything, taking care of any shields. And overload is actually effective against uh, bare health bars, and it can even do a little damage against armor and stuff, but it's, it's amazing against shields. It'll destroy shields, especially when it's maxed out. And then I have Jack along as kind of an AoE DPS. I'm single target DPS as an infiltrator here. Now, if I was playing an Adept and I could do things like Area Slam 
um, Shockwave and things like that, then I'd probably bring along Garrus, someone who's more of a single target DPS, and still have Miranda along for the constant party buff. And then I'd have her um, taking care of shields with her overload. Either way, set your party up to where you can hotkey a power that handles all situations. If you're doing shields, then you can have them hotkey powers to where, just like you use the directional buttons to guide your party members, they can hotkey powers to hit enemies with those particular things to take care of certain resistances. And that's pretty much the rule of thumb there, regardless of what kind of party build you have. Also would like to point out when assigning points to your character and picking gear for your character is pick a path and stick to it. If you're DPS, if you're going for damage, then go for damage. Even though it's insanity and I know they can kill you quicker and they can use all these powers and do all this stuff, they're just as aggressive as they are in 1. It doesn't change in Mass Effect 3. Bottom line is, a bunch of extra health isn't going to help you near as much as being able to kill them. They cannot kill you if they're dead. Find a path and stick to it. And, and concentrate all of your gear and all of your skill points towards that one particular thing. And once again, just like Mass Effect 1, cooldown is key. More often abilities are ready, the better. Now in Mass Effect 3, the developers take their obsession with powers to a whole other level by introducing detonations or explosions with just about everything. We got a taste of it in Mass Effect 2, where if an enemy was frozen or on fire and you hit him with, say, warp, you get something of an explosive effect. Well, now you can get those explosions with just about any power working with some other power. And rather than get into some big complicated chart on which powers work with which, there really is one basic rule of thumb you can follow to put together an effective party that's going to run through insanity, make it much, much easier. And it's basically this. There are two kinds of power. You have priming powers and you have detonating powers. And yes, yeah, sure enough, some powers work both ways. They'll prime for this and they'll detonate for that. Whatever, I'm not going to get into that. Um, all you really have to look for is the powers that have a duration. Those are your priming powers. And those that are one hit, one hit punches, kind of like this Nova right here, right? Okay, that's a detonator. And so if, if a power says that you can either extend its duration or that it'll do a certain uh, amount of damage per second over time, that is a priming power. That's one that you use to set up enemies for an explosion. And then you pick other abilities um, and concentrate on those abilities with your, with your squad mates, right, that can detonate those powers or capitalize on them. Now here I'm using this last battle at the end of the Omega DLC to kind of, uh, uh, just a very basic example. All right now that I've unlocked Arya, she has the ability Reeve. She has Flare, which is a really strong ability, but it has a really long cooldown, and it doesn't prime. So for example's sake, I'm going to use Reeve. And what Reeve will do, when she Reeves an enemy, it's going to set them up. So that when I hit them with either a Biotic Charge or a Nova, which are my two primary abilities, um, I'm going to detonate. And I'm going to create an explosion, which is going to do multiples of damage and even have an area of effect. And so I'll show you an example of hitting those enemies um, without it and then also hitting those enemies once they are primed, okay? And so keep this basic principle in mind when you put your party together. Certain classes are better priming classes, whereas certain classes are better detonating classes. That's why you have such a large variety of squad mates you can take with you. If you are a soldier, you are a detonating class, right? My vanguard here is pretty much a detonating class. Now notice, this soldier primed, and when I set off the detonation, although he didn't have much health, he disintegrated. And there's also an AoE effect. Without them being primed, not so much damage. So what I have to do is wait for Arya's ability to cool down. Now she is not the best team player when it comes to this, because Reeve has a relatively slow cooldown, and her other ability, which is Flare, which is basically a self-detonating ability and is a little overpowered in my opinion, has a really slow cooldown. But notice that he's primed, right? Now look at the extra damage. I mean, it's ridiculous. Okay, they essentially disintegrate. And so if you run your squad like that, just keep that in mind. If you have duration abilities, those are priming abilities. If your squad mates have those, and then run with a detonating class. Run with a soldier, run with a vanguard like what I'm playing here. Now, if your favorite squad mates are detonator classes like Garrus, who's a detonating class, he has concussive shot, and I think carnage, okay? Those abilities are detonators. Then run with an engineer or an adept, 
where you can freeze enemies, set them on fire, um, hit them with warp, hit them with singularity. Those are all things that Garrus can detonate, for example. But set your squad up to complement your character. And then set your abilities up to, to focus on what you want to do. Just keep that in mind when building your character and when building your team. Priming abilities and detonating abilities. Now since we're on builds and added bonus, I want to take this opportunity to share one of my favorite builds of all time. And that is my angry vanguard build. Yes, you are basically a human battering ram. And the beauty about this build is the synergy is almost perfect with this thing. Essentially, your attacks fuel your shield, and your shield fuels your attacks, as well as keeping you alive. The strength of your attacks is determined, is determined by the strength of your shield, essentially, at least with your Novas, right? And if you pick the right skills, and I'll show you exactly which order I morphed my skills in the top three ranks of each one. But basically, you allow for double full strength Novas that do essentially double damage to just about everything. And you have a biotic charge which allows you to fully replenish your shields on a successful charge. And then anything else you take is geared towards um, force and power damage bonus. And um, that is key also with your equipment and anything you research in Liara's lab should lean towards shield strength, power damage, and shield re recharge or power recharge if that's, all, if that's the only option you have. But you're looking for shield strength and power damage, which are basically the same thing. They really play play well together. They go hand in hand. But anyway, the, the synergy of this build is it's it's impeccable. I, I I really like this one. I'm kind of proud of this one actually. It's a lot of fun to play too. If you want to catch this in full effect and see how it progresses um, through the game, then this is the build that I feature in my um, Mass Effect 3 playthrough, and that's on Insanity. And it, and it, it at some points is looks essentially almost easy. It's a really effective build, especially if you have the right squad mates with you. So like I say, with, with this, you're not only a human battering ram, but with your Novas, a lot of what you do is AoE, so any biotic within range of you is going to get set off for detonations, and you start taking out mobs with this build on Insanity, and with the right biotics at your disposal, especially with Liara alone, you start one and two shotting some pretty strong enemies. It's really, really effective. Anyway, I hope you enjoy that. If you want to go check that out, um, as well as any of the other Mass Effect playthroughs, you can click any one of those boxes there. They'll take you to that playlist. And if you want to subscribe, if you haven't already, and want to catch more stuff like this as we go along, click that button up top. That'd be awesome. Love to have you. Anyway, appreciate you hanging out to watch this. Um, thanks a lot, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Y'all take care. Bye-bye.